Okay, guys. Um, yes, thank you guys for coming on time. Much appreciated. I know you guys have missed my voice. Um, thank you for um, um, coming back. I know we've taken a little bit, a bit of a mini uh, hiatus over the last few weeks. However, um, sometimes you have to take time to step back and recharge your batteries a little bit. Um, and sometimes you want to just laze around a little bit. So in my case, I was just lazing around, but um, I'm happy that you guys are here anyway. And um, as always, we're going to quick have a quick introduction about the A-team and what we're about before we get into the main agenda for today, yeah? Mm -hmm. So um, welcome, guys. Um, so about us. So the A-team, the vision is quite clear. And what we're doing is that our vision is to bridge the practical knowledge gap between the ambitious and the financially blessed. Um, how we do that, our mission is by identifying, nurturing and integrating current and aspiring high performers into our network of online wealth creators and um, our, what? our members. We are a family of ambitious internet entrepreneurs, professionals and investors on a mission to know ourselves, clarify the vision and of course to make it real. Now um, our core values are as follows, ambition being the first one, gratitude, self-awareness, perseverance, continuous learning, eclecticism and impact. So every single one of you, you on this call, if you've been invited by myself or someone else, then it shows that you guys have this trait, so well done. Um, the A team, so for those who don't know, the A in, act, the A in A team stands for active, and that's active commitment today, inspires victory every day. And as well as that, we affirm, we commit, we test, we iterate, we validate, and we execute on our plans to make it real. Now, um, a quick plug, of course. Um, so if you guys are interested in joining a book club where we share all things mindset, business, and money for current and aspiring high performers, um, Sam has just shared a link in the chat that you guys can get into. So have a go at it. We're in our beta phase at the moment. So um, if you guys want to jump on, sign up. Uh, we'll literally send you one or two. We'll send you three books on the topics, mindset, business, and money a month. And then we'll have two Zoom sessions where we can just come and brainstorm via Zoom, discuss it, share some knowledge, etc. I want to try it out for the next few months. So if you guys are interested, make sure you check it out. Um, so yeah, link will be shared in the chat so you can check out now. Um, and additionally, if you guys are interested in joining the A-team, um, then please email admin at tyrecoron.com, subject line, join the A-team, and Layla will handle your inquiries for you. So um, yes, so if you guys are here now, I please, 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 it's time to block all distractions. Um, I'm gonna um, quickly just introduce Connor before I unmute him and get him to talk. But if you guys are um, listening right now on your phones or you're on your laptop, et cetera, um, please just put your tabs away or just extra tabs for a second and just hide them. If you're on your phone, um, get rid of Snapchat, all that stuff there. Love Island is in an hour, guys. And I'm very aware of it. We are gonna go over, but if you guys can just, we can rewind it, record it, and we can, we can catch up, et cetera. So, um, Cool. Um, before we, we start, you guys know we like to start with a quote. And today's quote is, a year from now, you will look back and wish you started today. I have no clue he said it. Um, however, um, I know that a lot of you guys will resonate and someone needed to hear this today. So hopefully um, this is the sign you need to get shit going. You know what I mean? Make things happen. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'm going to unmute Connor quickly. Um, where is he? There he is. Um, before you talk, Connor, I'm going to quickly just give you some accolades and that stuff there. So give me a minute. Um, so yeah, meet Connor McCreesh. So Connor is a social media growth hacker. Um, he's a world traveler and digital um, nomad, as you can see from the background of his picture. And he's a founder of Transform Fitspo that he sold for six figures in 18 months post-launch. Um, he's going to basically share more about him in a second. But without further ado, yeah, Connor, how you doing, man? Hey, yeah, I'm fantastic. Um, I seem to have, uh, I seem to have like tweaked my ankle in the gym, and then over like over the last four, five, six hours, is getting more and more painful. Oh, okay. But other than that, I'm absolutely magical. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to chat to everyone. Oh, good stuff, man. Thank you again for jumping on the call. I really appreciate you taking the time of your uh, your travels, etc. Where, where are you currently at the moment? I'm I'm at my parents' house for a month um, in uh, Cornwall. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, what we're going to do, um, so before we get into any of the questions that I have for you, so just to let everyone know again, um, you guys are all muted for the purpose of making the audio very, very clear. And um, at the end, I'm going to ask him a few questions. Connor's kindly, um, um, he's got a presentation for us as well. So um, during the Q&A um, with me and him, he'll just open up his screen and um, give you guys some insights about how to um, leverage social media and make bread. And um, lastly, of course, we'll have an audience Q&A where you guys can fire any questions you have at Connor and he'll be happy to answer. So yeah, um, if you guys are cool with this, um, crack on with that. So um, yes, Connor, before we get into the main questions, um, I thought it would be great to kind of give individuals a, that are on the call and people that will be watching the replay um, an insight into your background. How did you get started in what you're doing? Who is Connor McCreesh? So again, sorry, I lost you, mate. 
Um, so um, I wanted to, you to kind of give an insight into your backgrounds. How did you get started and who is Conor McLeish? All right. Um, yeah, so I mean, I've been, I've been messing around with this stuff for about 13 years. Um, I, I, I like recall being, uh, when I was 15, um, or I think I read Richard Branson's autobiography or something and, and thought this entrepreneur stuff sounded like good fun. Yeah. And then and then basically decided it couldn't be that hard to make some money online. And uh, I think it took me over a year to make like, my first dollar. Um, but yeah, that, so I, I've been in this for a long while. And um, but, but it wasn't until not that long ago that I actually had and some reasonable success so i mean i was i was make i was definitely part of some like pyramid schemes when i was much younger and got started i was definitely uh i did some like product launches pulling together ebooks and maybe made a few hundred bucks each time one of those um went out but that was you know a lot of work um i started doing freelancing so i would write um ebooks when i was about 17, 18, 19, and uh, I was making like quite good money then. Um, I think I, I think I, would, I could make like 400 pounds a day or something, which you know for a 17, 18 year old was a lot of money. But but it was you know it was freelance work. Sometimes you'd get loads of work, sometimes you'd have no work. So um, I was never really satisfied with it. Um, I then went to university for four years, did a physics masters that took up a colossal amount of time. Um, but every kind of summer I would like have a go at like kicking off a business that would be self-sustaining and just never had the time to actually get it done. So I would be learning all of this stuff. You know, I learned all about SEO and email marketing and product creation and sales copy and, and all of these things. But I, I never quite had enough time, enough money uh, um, to all really like make it fit together and work. Um, so because of all of that, uh, because of all of the, the kind of previous experience I had, I got a job after university that was utterly unrelated to my degree. The, the dude that hired me was an entrepreneur and he had a startup called Hopper, which was a uh, Instagram scheduling tool. I mean, it still is a scheduling tool, but it's more broad now. Mm. And so I basically went to work with these guys on their marketing um, in the, in like the trial week I did there came up with a marketing strategy that essentially made them all of their money for, for that business, which funded two other businesses that they launched. Um, and, but, but during the 10 months I was there, I just absolutely, I couldn't make anything work. I couldn't pull anything else magical out of the hat. And I was just getting kind of frustrated and, and like worried that I didn't know. Um, I didn't know what I was on about. Like I thought mm. I might do. Um, but, but what I did get there was, was, the kind of feeling that Instagram was an important thing and that it could, it could be some really easy wins in there. There were loads of companies blowing up on it, just doing Instagram well. So using Hopper, uh, it would automate posting before that was like a more readily available thing, posting straight to Instagram. And I would just set up these accounts. I saw a lot of accounts in fitness that were doing well. And I set these out and, and just had them posting. And, and you know, some accounts I was growing at a few hundred, a week, two, three, four, five hundred a week in these fitness areas, and so I was getting an idea that fitness might be a good thing to go into um, f from that. Um, and so, yeah, I think within within a month of leaving, I'd kind of, uh, you know, I was trying out a few different business ideas, all using Instagram as marketing. I basically just wanted to build an audience and then find out what they wanted and then sell them that thing to make some money because I was desperate to take control of my life and to and to travel and, and just to like just to stop, stop kind of going along with the flow of, of, of what kind of life expected of me. So um, within about a month, I, uh, I want, you know, I, I kind of nailed in on, on what I would do within fitness. Uh, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see these like before and after transformation photos. They were like by far the most lucrative option to go for. And, and I'll chat a little bit more in the details of that later but basically i i grew this instagram account um very little manual work a lot of a lot of automation to quarter of a million followers in 10 months um a few months after starting that i i basically gave pinterest a go almost identical strategy got to nearly half a million viewers um a month from pinterest within six months um made a little you know made a made a product 
started selling it and within three months of launching the business was making, I don't know, I think mid, mid four figures a month, which took me from like almost not able to pay rent in London to like making, making more than enough. And within, I think nine months, I think nine months of launching, I started traveling and that was largely because I had a seven month contract um, on my place in place in London. So I probably would have started traveling before then, but um, yeah, I, I, um, I traveled with a company called Remote Year, so it was like 50 people, all with remote jobs, entrepreneurs, freelancers, creatives, all of this stuff, traveling, moving city once a month, and normally moving country once a month for a year, and that was absolutely great fun. Uh, I think this picture is maybe about nine months into it at Machu Picchu. Mm. Um, great fun, and I've been traveling for two years since, sold the business uh, just over a year ago now, uh, 18 months after starting it for, uh, for six figures as well. So yeah, stuff, stuff, stuff came together exactly as it needed to, because I think I was about two weeks away from not being able to, to pay rent after leaving my job. But, um, yeah, that's me. Perfect, man. Thank you for sharing that, man. And, um, like, um, I said that we're going to unpack a lot of that story, um, as the Q and A goes and obviously some of your presentation as well. Um, so cool. So what I wanted to kind of like unpack is, um, what exactly do you do now? And how does it add value to your clients? So um, at the moment, so I had the fitness business. I sold that. Now what I am doing, I'm in the process of doing is pulling all of that content, knowledge, every different uh, idea and skill and positive result that was like unintuitive or, or that can just be, you know, applied to something else. Um, I'm pulling that all into courses, but um, also, if people want that straight away, as I've been doing with some coaching clients, is uh, you know coaching to help them there. But um, a lot of the time, that there will be things that just transfer across so well. And and, and again, I think I'll touch on. I mean, I, in the presentation, I'm basically intending on throwing out as much value for you guys as quickly as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, a lot of things might be little changes in changes in wording or, or changes in how you style a pop up or something that will take you from you know, gaining 2% of emails to 8% of emails. And if that's at the top of your um, kind of funnel, if that's integral to how you make money, for you to two, three, four times the amount of emails you get might two, three, four times the amount of money you get. So, so it's finding these little levers that, that could, yeah, could just turn, you know, switch everything from you not making enough money to you making more than enough money. Um, and, and that's, that, that's a big thing I focus on. And then um, automation is, is a massive thing I focus on. So um, uh, uh, again, when, when I sold my business, it was, it was so, sold for low six figures. But like, if I cared about the business, if I, if I, re you know, I really wanted to change the world with fitness, that probably could have been sold for three, four, five times the amount. But instead of really getting into that business and trying to make it the, the next big thing, I just wanted to make it make more than enough money and then automate myself out of it. So for the last three months before selling the business, I think I worked four hours a month and I probably could have even automated that. Um, so yeah, a lot of what I focus on is, is little, you know, little things that get a big difference Okay. and, uh, and automation. Okay, perfect. Um, the next two questions before I even ask them. So what I want to do just for clarification for people that are maybe new to the concept of like, online driving traffic on um, social media marketing etc um how we want to look at this um process and if you can um adopt this when you're trying to when you're showing your presentation of um business with regards to um client acquisition or customer acquisition um and then the next phase is obviously um customer um retention or satisfaction per se and the last phase being customer retention etc so what we're focusing on today is how you drive traffic people that may not know about you are uh, into your funnel into your business into your website etc and convert them so this is what we're going to target for people that may not be familiar with some of the jargon um any any place that we can spot any jargon i'll try my best to simplify and if you could do the same that'll be great um so i've got two questions that i feel like would be probably best that you use um i'll ask them anyway and then you probably you probably unpack them in your presentation but the first question is how can one start and grow a highly engaged social media account in 10 months uh, as, as you did and um, what are the most effective way to monetize your following once you've grown the account so I'm not sure whether you can answer that now or you think that would be best to... I mean, yeah, that, that, that's, that's almost essentially fully covered um, by, the little, by the slides I've pulled together. So okay, um, cool. the questions now? Or... 
So that's that's fine. That's fine. We can um we can um jump straight to the presentation. So um I'll give you access now. Give me a minute. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen. Let me do. So let me know. Let me know if you can um start sharing the screen. Perfect. Right, can you guys see it? Um, can everyone see your screen? Just give me a, um, a shout in the, in the chat if you can see your screen, please. Yep, everyone can see your screen, yeah. Feel free to fire away. Cool, so um, yeah, like I said, I'm going to just try to try to fight through this like as quick as possible and give you as much like highly valuable things as I can. Um, again, you can always ask questions at the end and you can always just drop me an email if, if, if you're still not clear on them. But I really want to make sure that I'm, I'm giving you, you know, as much good stuff. So firstly, for Instagram, um, what, what you really want to do on Instagram is you want to search around for some compilation repost accounts. So, so this is a, a, an excellent place to start. So you can see in the image here, this is just an account that finds other influencers, for example, and reposts their content. Um, and, and, and so what you want to do is you want to figure out what, um, what different subsections of this account um, are there. So, I mean, if you look at this one, you can see there is sportswear, there's kind of casual wear, there is jewelry, there is, I don't know what this is, like leather clad motorbike men, there is smart stuff. So you'd be writing down all of these different options. And, um, and, yeah, and yeah, basically you, you want to find a selection of these. So when I was in fitness, I found, I think 10 different um, sub niches of fitness. So it'd be like hot, hot fitness girls, hot fitness guys, tattooed fitness girls, tattooed fitness guys, fitness couples, before and after transformations for girls, for guys, gym jokes, workout videos, like as many of these different things as is possible, because a lot less people make accounts just focused on these. Um, also, because these will link to a lot of influencers, you want to just write down 25 to 50 influencer account names and just kind of keep those, uh, keep those handy for later. Then what you want to do is create three to five sub niche accounts so you would make an instagram account for men's sportswear you would make an, an instagram account for men, men's smartware for uh watches for leather clad motorbike men um and uh, and yeah the point is that we, we want to test out all of these different accounts to find out which ones have the most earning potential um, so for example, when I was growing these fitness accounts, obviously the one that got the most followers was the hot fitness girls because Instagram. Um, but when, I was, when I'm trying to extract value from that, like there's next to no value to be there because it's just, you know, uh, it's just like boys jerking off to, to women wearing <laughs> them, right? Yeah. But the account, so I think that Hot Fitness Girls grew to, I think, 7,000 followers in however long I was running this test for. Three, four months, just automated, running itself, letting it grow. The before and after women's transformations grew to three and a half, but it had 10 times more clicks through a link in the bio. So in all of the bios, I think I just put a link to an Amazon affiliate product for uh, like one of those workout programs, like the. Uh, I can't remember what they are, like the Sean T, I don't know. There's like, there's like workout programs and I was directing people there and the, yeah, so the before and after women transformations got 10 times as many clicks as an account that was as the next best account, which was twice as big. So, so this before and after women's transformations was 20 times as effective as an earner. And if I hadn't done these tests, I wouldn't have known that I might've just gone with the, Hot fitness girls and growing a bigger account that just wasn't wasn't useful for for turning into money and what i wanted was to make as much money as quickly as possible the second thing to do here is to make some hashtag ladders um, if you look on medium for me i have a blog post that goes into more detail about this it's reasonably up to date still works 
So on Instagram, you want to do a hashtag search. Um, and just as you can see in the screenshot, you want to find a kind of a, a distribution of hashtags from low uses up until high uses. Um, and my numbers are, I would say, about 20,000 uses to 250,000 uses. You can find the uses on Instagram. It tells you in Instagram, in the app, as you're searching. Um, later, what you really want to do is, is, is see how many likes, you know, the average likes of the top nine results for those hashtags and go from about half the likes that your content is receiving to about five times the likes that your content is receiving and, and make a ladder out of those. But obviously, if you haven't posted any content yet, you're not going to know the average likes that your content receives. The point of this is, is that every time you make a post, it's almost certainly going to appear in the popular results for the lower use hashtags, okay? And then some people searching for hashtag squats work will see your post and will like it. And your, your post will get a few more likes or comments and it will rank for some of the higher hashtags. And every now and again, it will kind of pop up this ladder all the way to the top, getting you two, three, four times the amount of likes that you normally do which brings in a lot more followers to your account. So, um, yeah, you've got you should have these account. You should have three, four, five accounts. You should have potentially a hashtag ladder for each of those. It might not need to be unique for each, but it might have five, ten, fifteen unique hashtags for each one because you don't want hashtag sportswear for a smart one, but you want might want hashtag men's clothing for all of the clothing ones. Okay, cool. Next is. Powerful content. So, all, uh, in in my opinion, almost any time you want to, uh, and, and this strategy will work to work for most visual social medias. Um, almost any time you want to, you kind of grow big on a on a social media platform. Curating content is almost always going to be better than creating content when you start out. Okay, so if you can provide value to people by bringing together high quality content that's gonna benefit them, it's gonna save you a massive amount of time because to create a unique piece of content, um, like it, it, it's probably gonna cost you a lot of money, it's gonna take you a massive amount of time, whereas to just share a good piece of content, you can one, already see that that content has done well before, and, and, and two, it takes you next to no time to, to do that. And especially when you're testing these accounts out, you want to just be putting out a load of content and just see what works. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't uh, credit, credit the people that originally took it and, and shout them out. And if you want to like completely um, cover yourself, you can direct message these people and see if it's okay if you repost their content. Almost everyone is chill with you doing that. Um, and if you, again, if you are worried about um, reposting people's content um, and don't want it without their permission, all of these four photos are from Unsplash. So like you can get free, incredibly high quality content um, from sites like Unsplash. Um, I mean, stock photos aren't as like cringy and, and odd as they used to be. Lots of people now, professional photographers will take photos and upload them and, and you can use these. Another point to think about is that um, time on account or profile is, is a major ranking factor at the moment. So. If you are posting more video on your account, that can be good. If you post um, albums, which is multiple posts within a single post of video, that can also be good because you want people to spend more time looking at content posted from your account or on your account. Instagram stories as well, they, they, they are good at, and there are tools that you can use to repost people's stories. Um, but yeah, these are things to think about. The more pe time people spend on your account, the, the more the algorithm will like you and the more it will promote the content that you do post. Uh, time to automate. So uh, Jarvi, J-R-V-E-E is the most powerful tool um, for Instagram. I think it covers eight social networks. It, we use it for Pinterest as well. Also LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Twitter. It, it, it works for a lot of social media, so uh, it's worth getting it. And for the price, it, it's very good. Um, go into the repost tools. Um, you want to find that there is like repost based on engagement, set that to 50%. And what that will do is look at their last 12 posts, find the average likes of those last 12 posts. And then if any of the posts are above are like 50% higher than that, it will select those to be reposted. 
you want to have each account posting three posts a day and space them roughly eight hours apart. Um, you should use the repost tool um, to plug in those influencer accounts that you found earlier, those 25 to 50 influencer accounts. Obviously, you want to find the influencers that are just posting the type of content that's relevant to the account. So you want influencers that are only posting sportswear to go to the sportswear account, only posting smart stuff to the smart account. So it can be a little fiddly to, to, to figure this out. Sometimes you can put in keywords to only repost posts that have certain keywords in them. But, but basically there are a massive amount of different options here for you to juggle around and figure out. But you want each of these accounts just set up and automatically posting content without you doing anything. So we just want to leave these and let these grow and, and kind of figure out which one is going to be the most valuable. Um, tag original source caption is out. Okay. I, I took this from a different presentation. So um, basically it, in the captions, there are different, um, when you're reposting, there is options for what happens in the caption. There is an option which basically will pull through the account name of the, of the original person that posted it. So you should always use that stick an at sign in front of it. And, and normally what I do is just put a little camera emoji with a colon. So it will pull through who that, who this um, piece of content was originally from. And there's lots of other caption tools you can do. You can pull through the original caption that was on the, on the post. So it gives it more context and, and, you know, um, and will make it perform better. And yeah, again, um, this for curate versus create to curate something it takes you a minute and if you spend an hour creating something or putting in time the thing that took you a minute it might not perform as well as spending an hour but it's not going to perform 60 times worse and, and and so when you're trying to stack up advantage on your side it, it's always just going to be good to to spend uh, less time to get more out um, Getting feedback is uh, incredibly important when you're trying to figure out what you need to sell to people, okay? So in the captions that you have of these reposts, again, in, in the caption tool on Javi, you can add in options to be like, what, what is your biggest challenge? What's your biggest style challenge? Um, uh, you know, how, how do you, you know, what do you need to know about, um, I don't know, dress, dressing stylishly or, or, or whatever. You, you want to ask questions that reveal what people's dreams are and what challenges are stopping them from getting there. Um, you can set up Javi to direct message new followers, uh, maybe 20 or 30 of them a day saying, Hey, thanks for following me. I was just wondering like, what, what do you, what do you want? What, what do you, what do you want your life to look like? And why, why aren't you there right now? Why aren't you at your dream? Um, to use the strategy I used as well, if you use bitly.com, that's a uh, link tracker. So in your Instagram profiles bio link, you could just, um, you could find a blog post that was all about the best, most stylish men's suits. And you would put that in bitly and, and create a, a, a custom link that will track how many people go from your Instagram profile to this style blog post. And in your caption, you say, you know, whatever, click, click through this, this blog post to find 2019's top summer smart smart fashion i don't know and, and what you want to do here is on each account you're using these numbers to inform which account has the most desire for a product you can supply have has the most desire to to get a piece of information um so yeah that that is a that's a that's a useful bit of information um and and, and these are these are just so incredibly important because when you make a product that's what you're doing you want to take the top problems that people have and you want to solve them and often often the issue is people are just lazy and won't spend the time to search around and find them okay so if you spend 20 30 50 100 hours solving these problems putting them in a product you then have something that you can sell to people it's also incredibly valuable for your sales copy so the wording that people use when they speak the kind of words they use um, the pains they feel these are gonna be the words and the phrases that you put into um, your sales copy, your pop-ups to get people on your email list right into your emails so that you connect with people. Because if you connect with people, they're more likely to buy from you. Pinterest, super similar process. If you have two social media platforms you're on, 
you've got twice the chance of succeeding. Um, Instagram is being an utter bitch at the moment. <laughs> and, and, uh, and yeah, it's just like, it's a lot of trouble, but Pinterest is still going fine. And, um, and so that's why it's very useful. I've some, I, when I had the fitness business, um, I think, I think once my, my Pinterest account got, um, got, uh, like, uh, blocked or, or, or something, I, I think, I think someone reported it incorrectly and actually on my Google analytics, you can see there's like a flat line for 10 days or so. And, and I needed that traffic. Like I, you know, that, that was, that was like painful to me. So having two different platforms can be super helpful. So get on Pinterest. Uh, if, if you want to crack any social media platform, the first thing to do is just get on it and play around and like, and like, just see how to use it. Um, so you want to get on Pinterest and do lots of different keyword searches and just kind of keep track of the pins that appear. What do they look like? What are their styles? Um, you can do searches for accounts. So you can look for men's fashion and, and, and find accounts that have over 10,000 followers um, and save them. And you can look at the boards they have. So how Pinterest works is you have one account and you have lots of different boards and that could be sports fashion, smart fashion, watches, you know, whatever, different your boards kind of correspond to the accounts we made on Instagram. So you want to find accounts with over 10,000 followers and just make a list of the Pinterest boards that they have. Um, and, and, and yeah, so another good thing to do is just in these boards, look at which pins have the most free pins. So when you click on a pin, it will, it will zoom into it and it'll tell you how many times that pin has been repinned. If something has been repinned over 10,000 times, that's, that's like very good content and you should like save those in a folder somewhere and like keep an eye on them. Profile Builder, this is like super easy. It, it isn't, this isn't somewhere to, to focus a lot. Again, in your, in your account name, just put in a lot of keywords, um, you know, whatever, best, best, best men's fashion 2019. Um, yeah, in the description, again, add keywords, add a call to action, you know, click to my website, click to my Instagram profile, whatever you want. And you want to create 10 or 15 boards and, and use the influencer accounts that you found as, uh, as inspiration for that. So look at their boards and see, okay, I've looked at 10 different influencers and on all of these 10 influencers, they have five identical boards. So they're definitely going in and then, and then kind of construct it from there. And again, in the board description, just write, write a paragraph. It'll take a little while to get through all of it, but just put in lots of, lots of keywords for it because that's going to help people discover your boards and every little extra is going to kind of help you out. And if you go to something like canva.com, you can create some of these little, um, like these board covers and it'll just make your profile look a little bit more professional. Again, none of this is particularly accurate or anything, but just spend an hour or so getting it all set up and working. Automation. Uh, yeah. So use, use Javi again. Um, yeah, it, it is everything that, that the other tools can do. Tailwind is also a really good tool. It's, it's just for, it's just for Pinterest. I think they might do some Instagram stuff as well. Um, Tailwind can be quite good because it's more visual. And so it's more like you're engaging with Pinterest and you can kind of sharpen your eye for what's working. Whereas Javi, um, it, it's all, it's not techie, but, but you're not seeing anything. It, it just it interacts with the with Pinterest without you seeing. So it definitely works. If you're tight on money, use Javi. But Tailwind is probably a little better. It'll probably get you results a little um, quicker. Um, you want to repin, say three to five pins uh, for every single board you have. Okay, and, and the easiest way to do this is to set the sources as your influencer boards. So say you've made a board which is watches. And six of the influencer accounts that you found had boards with watches on. You could just put in those boards and it would pull up to five watch pins from those boards a day and, and repin them to your boards. And you want to do that for every single board. Um, over time, you'll start to see that some of the boards, some of the content will get repinned more often. Um, there will be certain styles of content on, on Pinterest that do better. Quotes um, do, do well. And so when some boards are getting more repins, you will want to repin to those boards more often and repin to the lowest performing boards less often. So drop them down to one or two and drop the high performing, board, uh, bump the high performing boards up to 10 or 15 pins a day. Um, but you probably don't want to go over about 100 repins a day. It's probably not much point. Um, so Javi, um, Tailwind won't do this. Javi, you can set it up to follow people and unfollow people. 
super simple strategy, but it still works on Pinterest. Uh, and again, you just you will follow the people that are following the influencers you found, and after five or so days, you will unfollow them. Um, also, another good thing to do is you can make something called a secret board, and that's just a board that only you can see. You should just make a secret board for inspiration, and then you can set Javi up to just be um, searching all of Pinterest for your keywords, all of your influencers pins on every single board. Just search as much content as you can for stuff that has 10,000 or above repins and just have it repinned to that secret board. So then you can go to that secret board and just at a glance, get a look at what is performing the best on Pinterest in your niche. Because at some point we're going to be remaking um, the, the content similar to this, but uh, in our own style. Here we go, actually. So after you after some things that are being repinned are getting over about a thousand repins, um, that, that then you want to start creating your own versions of them. Um, this normally happens when you have over, you probably need 500 to 1,000 followers for this to happen so that when you repin it, enough people following you can see it and then kind of seed it out and it kind of spreads out virally. Um, which is why following your influencers' followers is useful. It helps you just build up more followers more quickly. Um, yeah, you can see in these two pins here, so the, the fitness business, all the traffic I got was, was pretty much just uh, duplicating these kinds of content, and I got better and better at it over time. But pretty much, um, yeah, I remade this. You can see everything in the picture is uniquely made, but, but the workouts, all super similar. Um, and, and, and pretty much once I started posting these, I, I went from, I, I was getting a lot of traffic quickly. Um, uh, three, let's say three to 6,000 clicks a day were coming from Pinterest within two to four weeks of making my own pins in the style of the best pins I could find in fitness. So you can, you can get, you can get this shit working really quick. Um, as a bonus, if you want to test stuff out, if, if you haven't got 500 or 1,000 followers and you aren't um, getting things repinned a, a thousand times plus, maybe like if you've got time, if you, if you, you know, just want to play around, look at the pins that are in um, this, this secret board that you've got that have been repinned 10,000 or so times. Make your own version of one of them and, and pin it. And then again, link it to your website or something. Maybe make a blog post to, to, to go with it, but, you know, a short, easy one. Just see what happens, you know, because for all you know, it might just take off and then you might be getting thousands, 10,000 plus clicks a day if it really goes berserk. So it, it's worth playing with, but you're probably going to need thousands, a few thousand followers before it really kicks off. Um, and then, yeah, so, so the system, if, if you're working by yourself, um, you're going to need a simple posting system. If you've got a, a big media site and people are putting out loads of content all the time, that, that's fine. You can make pins that kind of relate in some way to your content um, and do that. But if, if you haven't got time, you need to figure out a system of posts, you can just pump out like mad. Um, so in, in my example, I did those workout posts. So I had you know the, those different workout images and then I just had a, a description that went with all of those workout images. So a description for how to do deadlifts, a description for how to do squats, and I had 100 and maybe 150, 200 descriptions for these workouts in a document, and then when I wanted to make a post, it was literally just copying and pasting um, uh, 8 to 10 of these descriptions, and that was it, that was a blog post, I'd make a title, I'd make an intro paragraph, and, and that was it, so it would take me, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes to, to make a blog post um, and, and the pin, I think, I think in under an hour, I could make a pin and a blog post and post it out. So I could put out a lot of these a day. Um, so if you can make something repeatable, that's good. Uh, again, good ways of short post types are recipes, workout descriptions, um, compilations of quotes, um, list, list articles, quizzes, you know, things that you can just, you can pump out quite easy. Look at Buzzfeed for, you know, the masters or viral Nova or any click baby site for just uh, how to pump out colossal amounts of potentially valuable but not necessarily valuable content um, and obviously if it's the, obviously the workout descriptions they're not um, they're not incredibly valuable in themselves but it's useful to have if you're pinning a workout to come to you later you want to be able to click and check on that or maybe you could have videos of, of each of them um, so 
that's pretty much Pinterest. Um, so what you want to do is direct the flow of all these people that come to your website to wherever it is that you want them to go, right? Wherever it is that you want to make money. Um, so I think everyone should be using WordPress for, for their websites. It's, it's super simple to use and you have complete control uh, if you are using Squarespace or any of the other ones, I, I just I, I think that's a terrible idea. Um, WordPress just just has so much more control in terms of website speed, which which improves conversions just by itself for for control for for almost anything. Um, so I would use uh, WordPress. Get the Sumo plugin, and Sumo gives you uh, these kind of pop-ups. Well, it gives you lots of different pop-ups, but um, Sumo is a great marketing plugin. And I use it to, to make these pop-ups and they perform incredibly well. Um, there is, uh, if you go to Google and look for co-schedule headline tool or uh, AM, uh, it's AM Institute headline tool. I, I wrote that down wrong. Um, these are two tools where you can type in headlines and it will give you scores based on how well it thinks head, those headlines will perform based on the algorithms and loads and loads of data. So you wanna try lots of different headlines in the AM Institute headline tool, if you get above 40%, that's pretty good. In co-schedule, you wanna get above about 75. Um, so put these in, try headlines. Again, this is a standard, um, this is a standard pop-up design that worked incredibly well for my business. It's worked incredibly well for my friend's business in yoga, has worked good for a business in mental health. Like if you basically say, what's your biggest challenge? and then put, their, put the five top challenges that people reply to you when you ask them in these buttons, you get very good results. Um, 15, 20, up to 33% click through on cold traffic. So that means when someone will come to your website, they've never been to your website before, they don't know you, and up to a third of people, this pop-up will appear, we'll slide that on the screen, up to a third of people read that and go, yes, I'm, uh, this is relevant to me. So those are really big results. Um, if you if you do emails, you're trying to you can like capture emails in these pop-ups. If you have a you know if you have a series of emails which are working or good at warming people up or getting people to know you or directing people to your product, um, I've managed to get five or eight percent um, email captures on cold traffic. So you know if you're sending um, you know a thousand people a day, that that could be eighty email addresses that you get. Um, and I I've been sending. I've sent 10 to 20,000 people a day. Um, I think, I don't think I was getting 8% conversions there. This is 8% conversions that my friend got with her yoga. But I think when I was sending 10 or 15,000 people a day, I was getting 500 email addresses to my email list a day. So this can be really good just to build up a giant email list, which you, know, you should be able to get some money from. Um, Sumo is great because you can just set up different tests uh, with like a click of a button, edit, you know, they've got a great editing tool. Just swap out the background images. Sometimes you might get a, something doing 50% better just because the background image looks different. Tr try out, uh, you know, five different headlines that, that, you, uh, that you make with Coast Schedule or, or AMI. Um, again, use, uh, use Bitly to create a link on each of these buttons so you can just check how many times people are clicking through these buttons relative to each other. Because it can be useful to know, you know, are most people clicking I'm feeling overwhelmed and stressed or are most people intimidated by fitness. So just the more data you get, the more valuable. Um, if you want to really step up the effectiveness of these, you, you, you can display these. Um, uh, I, I don't know how to say it. You can like custom display them. So, so this is one that is made to only display to people on mobile devices. You could make a different one to display to people only on desktop devices. Um, if you know that some people are coming to your site from uh, in a business sense, you could make you could you could only have this appear on business related blog posts, and other people might come to your site from a kind of self development um, thing. So you could have this only appear on posts on your site that are focused on self development. And, and when you make it more targeted, targeted is the word. Um, again, the effects just get massively increased. So. So the testing is good um, and, you know, making it more and more targeted to people. And, and there is good targeting options that you can do. Again, this will bump up the amount of clicks or email captures that you get. I think this might be the last one. Um, 
yeah, so, so, so for making money in like, you know, one of the simplest ways possible, you want to take all of this feedback you've got from the DMs, from uh, comment replies on Instagram where people are talking about their dreams and challenges to uh, email responses. So that's actually a good one I didn't mention. In the first email that people get on your email list, if you say, hello, thanks for signing up, say, before I, you know, give you this freebie or before we get into whatever, say, can you just stop and send me a reply with what is your dream life? What are your biggest challenges? And I find, and, and again, I've tried this in multiple businesses, multiple different niches, 20 to 30% of people will, uh, no, maybe 15 to 20% of people will reply with this. And this is just one invaluable data. And two, it's a great touch point with people. Um, so you can get in contact with them and, and develop the conversation and, and, and help them more. Uh, there is a Chrome extension called Vidyard, I think, that lets you leave video replies to emails, which again is like an insanely powerful sales technique. If people are taking their time to respond to you with, here are my challenges, and as almost everyone is going to have the same challenges, this is another thing you'll find surprising. There are probably five major challenges to, to all of your audience. Um, and everyone thinks they're a special snowflake, but they're not. Everyone has the same problems. <laughs> you probably know the answers to these problems. And so if you leave video replies, helping people out uh, and, and giving them some guidance on their challenges, they are so much more likely to buy from you in the future or even just then. Um, so yeah, you want to make a product that solves the top reported problems. Like I said, I think, I think in, in fitness, when I was doing this, I think, 95% of the responses were eight different areas. And I think 80% of the responses were just five areas. So I focused on those five and then I think I added in, I added in the other three. Um, but yeah, just spend 50, hundred hours gathering research. Ideally you've got some expertise in the area, which will allow you to charge more or, or to put some insight in. But if you just, if, if you purely gather information, you know, maybe you just find, you know, an Instagram account opportunity that you don't know anything about. You just think, oh, this is like, there is some money here. Spend a hundred hours learning as much information as you can from as much different places, kind of put it together in a nice step-by-step -step format and, and bam, you've, you've got a product. Um, for sales copy, look up uh, Pastor, P-A-S-T-O-R, Pain and Amplify Story Solution, Testimonial Transformation, Offer Response. It's, it's just a nice, simple, effective um, sales writing technique. I obviously haven't got time to go into sales copy. It's incredibly um, important and, and in-depth, and, and you're probably going to suck at it to start off with, but, but it's also very, very fun to learn and to get better at, and, and it, it, it will make the biggest difference in your business. Um, copy is just, it, it's mad. Almost any time... I mean, I mentioned this before, you can go from absolutely not making enough money, but if you have traffic and you're getting some sales, you know, everything's working, there can be one little conversion weakness in your, in, in your kind of chain. But if you just change some words or you change a picture or you change the order, um, bam, twi twice the amount of people make it through that step. And then, and then you're making twice the amount of money. And, and all of a sudden you can be like unable to make your bills and then and then before you know it you're making more than enough money um when i almost couldn't pay rent um in london like i had rent coming two weeks um it, it was i reworked a sales page and you know i was making all the traffic and, and then overnight um i went from making not enough money to i think uh, four or five thousand pounds a month just you know just by changing a sales page and, and it can happen it was like three or four days hard work bam i'm making I think four or five times the amount of money. Um, so yeah, Pastor is a good thing to start with, but you, you're going to need to just Google around and, and look at look at example sales pages, look at the competition, see what see what they're doing, see what wording they're using, see what wording your customers, uh, your uh, audience is using. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's it. Perfect, man. Thank you very, very, very much. That was crazy comprehensive. Um, let me um, bring it back to my screen, actually. Um, one second. Um, yeah, so, um, guys, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. So um, I've got a few more questions to ask um, Connor before you, we get to the live Q&A. So please hold them or you can write them in the chat. 
Um, if you want to speak for yourself, you can unmute yourself or let me know and unmute you. Um, but yeah, um, the thing I love about what, what you mentioned in that um, presentation is that, firstly, um, you don't reinvent the wheel, which is a big, big thing that I know a lot of entrepreneurs do, especially when it comes to like career and content. And the second thing that stood out to me as well is that before you even bring out any product, um, whether it is an information product helping people solve their problems or a physical product that people can actually touch, um, you go through a process of identifying what their needs are and you just basically brought down um, how you do that effectively. So thank you yeah, for doing so. Touch on that a little bit. Um, the, the the thing is, you might your product might actually be right for people, um, but they might not know that. So unless you know what they think they need, you're not going to be able to sell them. Because if you're trying to sell them what you know they need, they might not know that. You know that there can be a knowledge gap that they that they haven't crossed. So you need to even if your product is perfect. And a lot of the times the product isn't perfect. So I think this is still a good strategy to do anyway. But if your product is perfect, people just might, people might not know that. People think they want something like in, in fitness, everyone wants to know what's the best diet, what's the best workout. Whereas really they need to, you know, get, get all the unhealthy food out of their house. It's a, it's a mindset problem, but no one, no one is buying mindset advice. They want, you know, you need to, you need to sell them the diet and, and the workout but then give them the mindset advice. So that's an example. Oh, perfect. And that makes complete sense. Um, so I've got two more questions, but I want to definitely get to the Q and A. Um, so could you go through some of the don'ts? So some of the biggest don'ts in online community building. So with regards to Instagram, Pinterest, or any social media account you've used. I mean, again, I, I don't think this is, I, I mean, I think the, the curate versus create is, is a really massive one. And, and it's not that I don't think creating is good. If you, like, if you have infinite time, if, if you're just, you know, if you're a student and, and, you're, and you've got enough money saved up or, or, you know, you're getting enough loans or whatever that, that you are happy just to, to try out creative things, that's great. Create content. But like if, if you are, if you have a limited amount of money and you're on your own and that money is burning away, then don't chance it creating stuff. Cause, cause you probably don't know what's good. Like there have been so many times that I've been like, this piece of content is going to be, this is going to be fantastic. I know it is. And I post it out and there's, and there's, you know, tumbleweeds rolling past and it's just no good. And then you post out something completely random or you repost something completely random and, and it goes berserk. And, and after a while, you just get beat down and you go, I don't know what I'm on about. And then obviously after a while, you start to internalize what's good and then you kind of get an eye for it. But unless you've really been in it or, or, you know, you've got some great creative eye, curating versus creating is almost certainly going to be a better use of your time. So, so around building online communities and audiences, I would say, curate first and then move into creating so as you get more money more freedom you hone your eye for what's good then by all means invest a lot of time and money into creating but you want to make sure that 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 pays off if you haven't got a big audience to, to, to make some money out of the 300 hours you spend creating you know flying a halfway around the world and creating some travel documentary then it's stupid of you to do that and just hope that it will blow up in some magical sense and bring you a load of money so so creating is great. I, I, I love it. You should do it, but only when you have built a big audience. And I think curating is the safest, easiest, quickest way to do that because it's already proven content. Perfect. Okay, the last question I have before the um, live Q&A is, um, so do you offer any online coaching and training for those interested in improving their, um, their social media um, process, et cetera? Uh, so... Yeah, I mean, for, for anyone watching, if, if you like, if you want to like drop me an email, I'm, I'm like happy to chat, see at Um But yeah, other, otherwise, um, me and Ty, we, we're going to kind of see if we can put something together uh, for you guys in terms of the courses that I'm making. Perfect, cool. So yeah, um, thank you for that, um, Connor, again. So I just want to open up the floor for anyone that wants to um, ask any questions. So um, this is a perfect time. Let me know if you want to unmute yourself or you can just ask it on the chat. And I'll be happy to um, share. I'm sure kind of we'll be able to see some of the questions as well, but I'll be happy to read it out. Um, cool. Don't hold back, guys, when you're ready. Okay, so one question here we have here is the, um, from Sam. Okay, what is class as an influencer? That's a great question. Um... <laughs> 
uh, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. Like if, I mean, on Instagram, if you've got above 20,000 followers, probably good enough. I mean, really it, it's a, it, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a definitive, um, term just it's a convenient way to to see who is putting out you know who's putting out content who are the people that are making the content and getting success with that who are the people that have big audiences that's you know what an influencer is um but yeah it's not really i wouldn't get too hung up on it cool and um, just just on that as well i think that with regards to your your particular niche as well so let's say you're your guy um your fitness person the influencers will be influencers that are within the fitness niche kind of thing you know what i mean so um just to cover that so um the next one should should i don't think he's finished the question okay um so with the new instagram strategy of hiding likes will this affect the whole influencer market uh yeah yeah i mean uh probably i wonder if it'll it'll fix it so, so again i'm not um I'm not really in the, uh, I don't really do influencer marketing, right? Because it's, it can be done well, but, but it's not something that, like you have to really consider it. You have to really think of a big campaign and you have to be chatting to these influencers and, and getting them involved. Um, and, and yeah, if you hide likes, it, it's probably just going to make it, um, I, I think it will be good. I think it will mean that more influencers will start tracking the amount of clicks they get. Um, the, the Instagram business and creator tools uh, do show you, um, what do you call it, like, like visibility, how many people saw posts. So I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's going to hurt anything. I, I think it should, uh, I think it should probably help. Um, but yeah, as on getting on Instagram, influencer strategies is like a whole big chunky topic that I mean, I'm, I can if you want, but yeah, it's, 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 it's not just, uh, it's not just paying someone to, to wear your, you know drink out of your sports bottle or whatever okay, cool cool i hope that answers your question um stephanie asks on what would you advise for someone who is selling niche products online build an audience of people interested in that niche um audience is always going to be is always going to be um it's always going to be valuable but uh i mean if, yeah if, if you want maybe ask a more specific question. Um, but yeah, always building an audience is going to be valuable. And, and the good thing is if you, if you launch a product and that doesn't work, um, then you, you, you aren't losing out because you still have the audience there, which is still valuable. So you can find new products to sell to them. Um, yeah, build an audience, build, build multiple audiences. Um, is my advice. Oh, perfect. Um, has anyone else got any questions or anyone want to unmute themselves? Um, feel free. This is a perfect time. You guys don't be shy because um, Connor's here. Okay, cool. So Sam asks, are there specific social media platforms to use? So I'm guessing he's asking that with regards to what are the top performing social media um, channels that you use? Um, I mean, it, it, it depends on, on your product and, and things. So Pinterest is still great for traffic and it changes so it just changes so much less than Instagram. Instagram is a, can have massive, massive rewards if you, if you put in the work and increasingly if you put in the work, so they're just getting more and more sophisticated machine learning algorithm, algorithms that trip up a lot of types of automation. Um, uh, up to recently, you could still follow and unfollow and automatically engage with large amounts of accounts. You just can't do that now, maybe a hundred accounts a day instead of a thousand accounts a day. So it's just, it's very difficult to continue to game Instagram. You can still get insane, insane success. You can launch a brand overnight. You can launch million, you know, million dollar companies overnight on Instagram, but it takes a lot more work. Um, LinkedIn, uh, so look at Linked Helper. That's an automation tool for LinkedIn. That is absolutely great. If you wanna get in touch with people for business services, um, I've got lots of friends that sell Instagram account management. Um, I actually wonder how they're doing at the moment. But they will basically automate people's Instagram accounts and just get them like some nice, slow, slow steady growth. Um, whatever, 50, 50 quid, 100 quid a month per client. It's just nice and simple. And, and a lot of them just gather their leads with Linked Helper and LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, it very much depends on your platform. But I would, I would look for easy wins. Um, TikTok, um, I would give that a go. I'm kind of experimenting with that at the moment. That's probably the new 
kind of Snapchat, it, it, you know, it's, it's the new social media platform that lots of young people are using. Um, but yeah, just like just get on a platform, repost content, repost content from other places that is performing well and just see what happens. Um, uh, I've, got a, I've got a blog post, this was from a couple of years ago, but you can see that I went on Imager and reposted some stuff from Instagram and, and tested it out a bit. And some of these posts were getting hundreds of thousands of likes um, so, or, 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 or engage upvotes. Um, so play around, see what works. Um, see if there's an automation tool which will allow you to, to automate some of it. Um, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it completely depends on your niche and product, but play around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, and again, that just to um, add on to that, what I tend to do is that I just ask them, like, literally manually. If I know someone is my target audience, I ask, okay, where do you hang out? It's literally a lot of people like to be around the bush and assume stuff, but if you're unfamiliar with what social media platforms to use, you can literally go to your target audience or your perceived um, target audience and just ask, okay, where do you hang out? What do you do? And normally they just give you the answers. So I um, hope that helps. Um, I've got one last question for you. So um, with regards to um, Transform Fitspo, I know we're a little bit with nine or two. Um, yeah. Transfer Fitspo, um, what, so what products did you sell um, to, um, to get to that amount per month? You said you were selling at five figures a month. So, so, um, so I had a four week ebook workout program and then I had a 12 week workout program. The four week one, I think, if I recall, it was like an at home one and then the 12 week one came with nutrition advice, a macro counter, gym workouts, um, kind of home workouts with equipment, so with dumbbells, with um, BOSU balls, balance balls, chairs. Um, that, that was it. I mean, I think, I think the small ebook maybe was 100 pages. The big, the 12-week the ebook was 250 pages. Short ebook was sold for, I believe, $37. Full one was sold for can't remember exactly. Actually, I think what I did, so here's, here's another good thing to, to throw in. So I had the short product. Um, and then when you were buying that, there was a tick box option to get my 20 best performing workouts. And literally all I did was I made a PDF and, and found my 20 top performing pins, pulled the workouts from there and sold that for $19. 50% of people Fine. But um, so, so could you repeat the last bit? Is that, is that right? Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so so what, how, what part did you hear up to? Um, you, you mentioned that um, after the, the night, 50% of people are now in the car. Okay. So, so yeah. So I, I, I got these top 20 workouts and then 50% of people that bought the um, first product, the four-week program, half of them paid $19 for this for essentially something that was just me finding my best performing pins and putting those workouts in a document in a, in a, in a PDF. Okay, um, sure. So on average that added $10 to every single sale of the four week program I got just doing this one thing. So like that, like that can make a big difference, like 20% extra earnings on every single sale from two hours of work. So. Perfect. And um, I, I love that because um, you said PDFs, right? And I know a lot of individuals on this call right now that have got great products um, that can be, that can make a lot of sell. So I'm in it. So I hope that's inspiration for you guys. The last question we'll have for today, unless anyone wants to um, add another, is from Charlie. And Charlie asks, um, he's played around with Reddit a lot. Any ideas for driving traffic from that? Uh, oh, hey, what's up, man? Um, so, no. Um, I mean, I, I, I basically, I assume that uh, Reddit's a little different. So I, I, I got some good results on Imager. Um, but they're all fucking snakes. It's a nightmare. So if, if you come across as in any way promotional or, or anything like that, they're just going to completely gut you. So you have to like deliver just a colossal amount of value. Um, I, I, I think I think success, like personal success case studies um, from what I've seen on Reddit can work quite well. So, you know, I, I mean, I could probably make a post on here's how I grew this Instagram account or this Pinterest account or, um, you know, here's how I you know, made and sold a business for six figures in 18 months or, or something like that. You have to give a lot of really good detail and then, uh, and then you can send people to 
know, here, here's the original post, it, you know, if you want to get more detail or, or you want to get like a, a downloadable or something, but it has to be kind of standalone as it's uh, by itself, I think, or, or appear that someone else is posting it. So maybe buy some, buy some Reddit accounts or something. I don't know. I've not tried it, but um, yeah, I'll give it a go. Okay, cool. Okay, so Mark asks, um, what website type did you use to sell the programs? I think, I think WordPress, which I think, yeah, he said, shop, he said WordPress, WordPress, yeah. right? So I, yeah. used, uh, I used WooCommerce and, and WordPress. That, I mean, that was perfectly good enough. Um, it's, it, it, it's nice because, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't do coding. I can do a little bit of coding. I can, like, I can like figure stuff out from little online tutorials and stuff. But, but you can kind of customize your sales process. And sometimes if you can cut out like one page in your sales process, that, that might give you like 20% more conversions. Because it, it even would just, if there's like an, an, an unnecessary page in the middle, like if you have to click to buy something and then it says, do you want to add this to your cart? Then you click add to cart then it goes to add to cart and then you go to checkout. Like if you can cut out one or two of those pages, just when people wait for a page to load, like only 80% of people will get to the next page, even if it's like perfect. Um, so if you can cut out some of those steps, which you have more control over in WordPress, I mean, Shopify is very good, but, um, that, that can be useful. Um, I did try, uh, click funnels for a bit. I thought click funnels was shit. I thought it was completely overhyped. Um, but if you look at Kartra, K A R T R A, that I think is actually very good. It's like click funnels. If they could make things that look good and, and it all works nicely. <laughs> If you want a nice package program with, you know, it can run your emails, it can do all the tags and targeting, it can, you can make web pages on there, you can get affiliates, you can do all offers, you can do, you know, cookies, countdown timers. Kartra, I think, has got a lot, um, and it's about the same price as ClickFunnels, so maybe one or 200 bucks a month, so expensive, but if you're making sales, it, it might be worth it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think that. I don't see any more questions. I'll give you guys like 10 seconds. Um, because I can't like Love Islands on you, know what I mean? It's getting kind of heated in the villa, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm joking, but okay, cool. So I'll leave us that then. So thank you, um, guys. So at this moment in time, um, Sam is going to share a feedback form at the um, end of this, um, um, in the chat. So you guys know we like feedback to kind of ensure to figure out how can we can, we can improve this cause. Sorry for my slow words. Um, but yeah, um, let me know if you, if you get it there, you can see it. Please um, add feedback. If you've done it before, then do it again, please. Anything that you, um, you picked up in a, in a call that you feel um, you want to read up on, that'd be great. I know, yes, Connor um, McCreese just shared his email. So if you want to connect, he's more than happy to um, communicate with you guys. Any questions you have, please um, contact him. Connor, see at connormccreese.com and it's there. So um, without further ado, again, guys, for those who don't know, the A team, um, the A, um, A team stands for active and that's active commitment today inspires victory every day. And of course, we affirm, commit, test, iterate, validate and execute in our plans to make it real. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you guys for staying. Connor, thank you very much for sharing the value of us. And yeah, we'll look forward to um, speaking to you guys. Yeah. Quick one. Sorry, guys. Next week, um, I'm not going to be available. Um, you guys are doing up Google events now, you know what I mean? I've been asked to run a Google event, so I'm stepping up in life now, joking. But um, I'm not going to be available next week, so um, the next call will be on the 8th of August, because you know the first week of August, um, we don't do any calls, and I'll be in Portugal getting drunk and um, being, being on my worst behaviour. But um, I hope you guys are great. Uh, thank you again, guys, and um, I'll speak to you on the 8th of August. Thank you very much. Cheers.